Listen, how do you feel uh, Hollywood bringing District 9 into a different volume, if you want? With Elysium? Yeah. I think it was... It was... Um, it made things easier for Neil and I to, on the production. It made... The biggest difference for me, I think, though, was that I was playing a villain and I was therefore playing a smaller role, so there wasn't as much pressure on me, um, both in terms of just practically on a daily basis, in terms of, like, on District 9, I shot every single day. This time I had a lot of free time, I had money, I had, you know, I could go and enjoy myself on my off days. Um, and, uh, but... but it kind of shows that the system works. You know, if you do something original and creative and, and where people think you have talent, then they sort of let you do it again until until it doesn't work and, <laughs> and then you're in trouble. No, but I yeah. think it really works because it's, mm. uh, you know, it's not science fiction. I mm. think we live almost like... Yeah, I'm glad. I, yeah, extreme, I, I, I agree with you. It's just in a heightened version of pretty much how things already are on, on Earth. But we're totally controlled by we don't know who. Yes, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Where would you like to live? On Earth or on Elysium? Is that, a, is that like a trick question? Do you want the Hollywood answer or do you want the real answer? The real answer. The Hollywood answer is, of course, I would live with all the poor people and I would give all my money away to help them all. The real answer is I obviously want to live in Elysium. I grew up there. I live in Elysium here in Hollywood. You know, right. so, yeah, of course. I who doesn't? Anyone who tells no. you they don't want to live there, I think they're lying. No, but yeah. wait. Hmm? I think I would like to live on Earth, but organize people and and t- take over. You see, and then you'll be just like Jodie Foster's character, and there, when there's too many, you'll be like, no, there's too many people here now. It's not comfortable. I can't have 700 people in a park. We designed the park for like to be enjoyed by 200. Yeah. It's a tough decision, but uh, yeah. it's a great movie. How how are you enjoying this uh, Hollywood adventure? Are you becoming super Hollywood? I guess. Uh, you know I'm never here. I'm never yeah. here, you know. So um, I'm in Russia right now. I, 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 I'm doing a movie with a two and a half million dollar budget with a first time director who's made a very creative POV short. So I've I've been very sure not to get sucked into the Hollywood thing. It's really about work for me and doing interesting different projects if I can find them and if I can Hollywood has embraced me to a certain point I mean I haven't you haven't seen me do a lead in a film since District 9 and it's hard it's a very competitive place you know even with the success that I had with that film to convince people that that I can hold an audience in a, in a, in a big film for some reason hasn't been as easy as, as I might have hoped um, and I still uh, uh, but I still go for whatever I think is is kind of interesting that I can that I can get how satisfying is it for you to get Lost, like in, you know, you play Kruger Superman. It's interesting because you get to explore sides of yourself that you wouldn't normally in a safe way, especially something like Kruger sort of realizing. I never sort of fully realized how much of that type of, how much capacity I would have, for example, having grown up in South Africa, having dealt with the kind of, you know, being a 14-year-old kid and walking around my house with a, with my dad's gun when I hear a noise and I'm living at home alone or something. I grew up with that. So suddenly realizing, um, wow, that there's a bit of a, a harder side to me that I could draw on if I if I needed to or um, was, was interesting. It was an interesting <laughs> venture. 